So this is the topic of gene technology. We'll look at what knockout mice are and how they can be used as a valuable animal model to investigate gene function. We will look at the genetic modification of soybeans and how it can be used to improve production, including altering the balance of fatty acids and the prevention of oxidation of soya products. We will look at the widespread use of genetic modification of commercial crops and other transgenic processes uh, and how they have caused public debate and what the advantages and disadvantages are. By knocking out, making inactive, a gene and observing the result, you can work out what that gene was doing. This is done by inserting a new gene that is similar to the gene to be studied, but which makes the original DNA sequence impossible to read so the gene is silenced and therefore cannot make a protein. So we're going to knock out a gene, we're going to stop a gene working by inserting another gene that ruins it basically. Okay? We, can also, we can also use them to investigate human diseases in animal models by knocking out the equivalent gene in the animal so that it mimics what happens in the human. And we'll talk more about that later on. Probably one of the biggest and most discussed areas of genetic engineering is in food production using GM crops. Crops can be engineered to manufacture a range of proteins that have either a direct or indirect benefit to humans. We've already discussed in this presentation how plants can be engineered using agrobacterium tumor fascians and once you've got these transgenic plants you can then clone them using tissue cultures. You can make thousands and thousands of identical genetically modified plants. The way that works is you take a few cells from the dividing meristem of the plant that you've already modified and you put them on gel impregnated with plant hormones and this produces a mass of undifferentiated plant cells by mitosis and then you transfer them to another gel which has got hormones in to stimulate root growth and stem growth and you end up with clones of these genetic modified plants. Now gym crops are common around the world now and in the US more than half the maize, cotton and soy crops are GM and they are very common in China and India as well. Some modifications are for the producer to get a more profitable, reliable yield, and others benefit the consumer, such as improving nutritional content. Here, for example, there's some GM bananas, which are resistant to diseases. Um, about 85% of the maize grown in the, in the uh, US is resistant for particular pests that normally wipe out whole crops. They've even engineered rice that contains vitamin A, that people who live in countries where they're vitamin A deficient in their diet can grow this special type of rice so that they don't suffer with night blindness. The example we're going to look at is GM soybeans. Now, soybeans are the most widely cultivated legume in the whole world. They are high in protein and low in fat and have three main commercial uses. The beans can be eaten raw or used to make products such as soy flour, soy milk, tofu, soy sauce and miso. The, you can extract the lipids out of the beans and use them for oil, uh, cooking oils, but also they're used in cosmetics and other products. And then once you've taken the oils out, there's also the mass left over, which you can use as animal feed. Now it's estimated that up to 95% of all soya beans in the USA are genetic modified. And there are two main modifications. One, herbicide resistance. They're known as Roundup Ready soybeans. Now what the farmer tends to do is spray weed killers or herbicides on their crops to, because normally the weeds grow in the fields as well. They take up nutrients, they take up light. But the weed killers, they do also affect the soil crop. However, if you make the soil crop resistant to these weed killers, then you can spray weed killer everywhere and it will kill all the weeds but the soil will, won't be affected and it will just have more, more space and more light so you're going to massively increase the yield. The other way that they're engineering soya is to uh, change the fatty acid balance. Now, they've got a good level of fatty acids in them, but they naturally have a low aloic acid and a high linoleic acid. Now, aloic acid is better for your health, and also linoleic acid tends to oxidize and go off. So the GM variety has less linoleic acid and more aloic acid, so it's healthier for you, and it lasts longer, it stops it oxidizing. Now, you will have studied now examples of genetic modification, and we'll look at a few more now with animals, and then think about the, the pros and cons, the advantages and disadvantages, the, the benefits and concerns, and why this has led to a large public debate. 
So we've yet to really consider how genetic modification can be done with animals and what use there is to that. Well, uh, we have talked about knocking out a gene and you can create these what are called knockout mice. Now these are animal models of a disease and it's much more ethical to take the gene out of a mouse and then use it to test out new treatments on the mice rather than do it on humans. For example, in the early 1990s, knockout mice with an inactive CFTR gene were developed and these mice then had similar chloride ion transport problems to the humans affected by cystic fibrosis. We could then use those mice to study the disease and to trial potential gene therapy cures whereby you inject uh, the functioning gene in vivo using liposomes to cure the disease. Animals in general are very complex genetic modified, but it has been done and they have managed to make transgenic animals that produced more than 20 human genes so far. Uh, the issue is then how to mass produce that because unlike plants, which you can easily clone by micropropagation, cloning of the animals is much more complicated and, let, and it hasn't been done on a mass scale yet. If you want to genetically modify an animal to produce a human protein, then all you've got to do is take the human gene, insert it into the egg of the animal species, but also transfer a promoter sequence so that that gene gets expressed in the milk of the female. Then grow the embryo in a surrogate, and then once it's grown full size and reached maturity, you can then uh, take the milk from the female and you'll be able to extract the human protein straight from that milk. One thing that we're trying to do uh, in terms of um, genetic engineering or modification with humans is something called gene therapy. This is where scientists introduce a working gene into human cells to override a recessive allele that's already there. Um, but to get this passed on to the next generation means you have to do it on germ cells and germline research is banned in the UK. So it hasn't been that effective yet in terms of making real treatments for humans. So there are lots of benefits to genetic modification. For example, in agriculture, GM crops getting a higher yield, greater rain, uh, growing crops in a greater range of climates, uh, using less pesticides, less fertilizers, uh, feeding the growing population. In terms of medical treatments, you can manufacture drugs using microbes instead of using animals. You can use animals though as, as models of disease to try out new treatments uh, rather than on humans. Um, GM crops can improve nutrition. Um, and like I said, there, there, might be an, there might be a solution there to feeding an ever-growing population. The concerns are, well, on a social level, the ownership of all this technology tends to be by large multinational corporations and the seeds, GM seeds, you tend to need to buy new each year and that's expensive. So we're really benefiting the rich and the poorer countries who probably need this technology the most are not gonna get the benefit. There are big environmental concerns in case these marker genes for antibiotic resistance get out into the wild plants and make super weeds. GMO um, may have an unforeseen effect on food webs um, more widely. Uh, also, people are worried about it decreasing genetic biodiversity even further than we've already got now. And also health concerns uh, in terms of what are the long-term effects, the unforeseen genetic effects on these organisms. Could it cause metabolic diseases? Could it cause cancers? Could eating genetically modified food cause um, issues to humans? There's no evidence for that, but they, these are concerns that people have.